I have for you one simple question. What is the name of this machine? It's a Famicom. It's a Famicom. It's a Famicom. Then why does it say family computer right on the front of the machine? You could say, well, that's what it was originally called, and later Nintendo shortened the name. But every Nintendo-made product of the 8-bit line says family computer somewhere on the product, and not the word Famicom. The disc system from 1986, the new AV model from 1993, and the classic mini from 2016 all say family computer on the machine and in documentation. So where have we seen the word Famicom before? I've seen it on the twin Famicom, but that was made by Sharp, not Nintendo. And a few other things made by Sharp also use the word Famicom. Let's not forget that this is called the Super Famicom, not Super Family Computer. So what gives? What if I told you that Sharp beat Nintendo to the punch by about five years and had their own Famicom first? Stick around. This is Famicom Wars. It's been over 40 years since that fateful day when Nintendo first let loose its 8-bit home video game machine, known as the Family Computer in Japan, often called Famicom for short. Since that very first day, July 15, 1983, the gaming world has never been the same. It put Nintendo in the driver's seat of the TV game market in Japan. When Nintendo brought the family computer to the Western world as the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES for short, the success on both sides of the Pacific led to the focus of game development shifting from America to Japan, allowing Nintendo to reshape the world of gaming as they saw fit. Long after Nintendo retired its 8-bit line in 1994, the name Famicom lived on. Even outside of Japan, the term has a high recognition rate with gamers, sneaking into the lexicon over time. Wait, did I just say Famicom or Family Computer? Well, the machine kind of has two names. To understand how and why, you have to go back to those early days before that common household word, Famicom, had any meaning. Nintendo, which has been around since 1889, entered the video game market in the 1970s. Among the many items released by Nintendo in those days was a Pong-like 6-in-1 TV game machine in 1977. Arcade games, Computer Othello, Block Fever, and Monkey Magic expanded the brand as the 1970s ended. Nintendo also joined the LCD games market in 1980 with a line of handheld machines called Game and Watch. These all led Nintendo to converge those previous products into one, creating an affordable machine that would play Nintendo's early 80s arcade offerings at home. Masayuki Uemura was put in charge of this project, what would become the Family Computer, aka Famicom. The choice of CPU, casing design, and the games that play on it are all vital to the success of a piece of hardware. However, the marketing aspect, along with the right name, can make the difference between having an also-ran or the market leader. You don't have to look any further than the home computer market. The term PC, short for personal computer, has been synonymous for decades with any desktop or notebook computer you can use at home or in an office. But the right to call that computer a PC goes to IBM, who in 1981 branded their offering the personal computer. The IBM PC just happened to run Microsoft DOS, which ended up being licensed to other computer manufacturers, which then mostly took over the world, leading everyone to just using PC as a catch-all term. Other examples of this ubiquity can be seen in Jell-O, Kleenex, and Xerox. Some people don't even know that these words were trademarks to begin with. Masayuki Uemura thought that the right name could lead to Nintendo's machine becoming the de facto name for home video games. Uemura disclosed in the past that the name Family Computer was directly inspired by the term Personal Computer, stating that if Nintendo had a machine that the whole family could use together, the name should reflect that. His wife also made a recommendation, as Mr. Uemura recalls Mrs. Uemura saying, quote, Why not just call it Famicom? Everyone's going to shorten it to Famicom anyway. 40 plus years of having the word Famicom embedded into our minds may cause us to skip over such a statement. 
But have you ever asked, why would people shorten family computer to Famicom? In the 19th and 20th centuries, Japan opened up to the rest of the world after over 200 years of isolation. This led to a flood of inventions entering the nation. While a few of these use a purely Japanese name, the closer you get to the present day, the more you find technology borrowing that name from the English language. When it comes to personal computer, the name gets cut down to four syllables and is known as pa so kon un. So when Mrs. Uemura said that people will naturally say fa mi kon un, she is referring to this habit which happens naturally in the Japanese language. All Nintendo needed to do was name their machine in that catchy fashion and take over the world, right? Sure, only one small thing was in the way. The term Famicom was already trademarked. In 1979, the Sharp Corporation had released their own Famicom, but it wasn't a game, it was an oven. In this case, the Famicom is short for the Family Convection Oven, a watered power grill and range. Since household appliances don't get obsessively chronicled in the way that video games seem to be, little information about this oven has been preserved. Only a few images confirming the Sharp Famicom exist. One of a catalog from September 1979, one newspaper ad that ran on September 25th, 1979, and one photo of a box for the Famicom oven in some old garage somewhere. The Sharp Famicom may have been a hot item 45 years ago, but it seems to have faded away. So how does all this work legally? In Japan, any term that is designated as a common use word in the dictionary cannot have a trademark applied to it. Any invented word, like Famicom, can be trademarked. The law also allows multiple trademarks of the same word, so long as they are not of the same classification as stated in Article 3, Paragraph 1, Item 1 of Japanese Trademark Law. Therefore, it would be completely fine to have a Famicom as a TV game and then a different Famicom as something else that's clearly not a TV game. After all, it is the family computer and the family convection oven. But it would not be okay to have two companies that each have a TV game called Famicom. In that event, whoever filed first would hold the rights to that name. In addition, the law demands that the Japanese text take precedence over text in another language. So having one spelled in English with an M and the other with an N at the end doesn't matter. These two points in the law locked Sharp in and protected them against Nintendo later on. But why? Are an oven and a TV game so similar that trademark law would benefit Sharp? No, they aren't. So what blocks Nintendo? The Famicom Oven was registered as a consumer electronic device. This vague wording meant that when Nintendo went to file the word Famicom for their game, they couldn't. Sharp filed another trademark to protect the word Famicom in the area of games and toys, building off the existing trademark and possibly to use the name for its own computer line down the road. Much like Mrs. Uemura predicted, following the debut of the family computer on July 15, 1983, the term Famicom swept the nation. Even non-Nintendo games were called Famicom games. Nintendo was in a situation where the company couldn't even legally use the word that everyone else was using to talk about them. Despite this, Nintendo uses the word Famicom in some cases, while there is no sharp Famicom oven these days. So what exactly happened? Nintendo and Sharp entered into a business agreement to settle the matter. Nintendo and Sharp became partners, in a way. Sharp received a license to the family computer hardware for use in separate products, in exchange for Nintendo having access to the Famicom trademark. The process took a few years to complete, but on October 17, 1985, the transfer of ownership of the name Famicom from Sharp to Nintendo was official. With a license to the family computer, Sharp released a few interesting products. A standard television set with a family computer built right in. These came in various sizes and models. Later, Sharp released the Famicom Titler, which allowed users to overlay graphics on top of gameplay for video production. The most famous of all was the Twin Famicom, an all-in-one unit of the family computer and the disk system. 
Sharp also released a few odds and ends using the Famicom name, such as AC adapters. One more part of the agreement ensured that only Sharp television sets were exclusively featured in Nintendo advertising. Starting in 1988, Nintendo issued the Famicom Family Mark for family computer hardware, software, and peripherals, similar to the seal of quality in the US. Nintendo registered the name Super Famicom all for themselves in 1987. When the Super Famicom went on sale in 1990, nobody referred to it as a Super Family Computer, with some using the word Sufami. The most well-known cases of the term Famicom being used by Nintendo are the Famicom Mini set of games for the Game Boy Advance, released in 2004, and Famicom Remix for the Wii U and 3DS, released in 2013 and 2014. Famicom also appears in a few games, if you look closely enough. However, Nintendo has never used the word Famicom in reference to hardware. The models released in 1983, 1986, 1993, and 2016 by Nintendo all say Family Computer. But maybe they don't need to. After all, everybody out there already knows... It's a, it's Famicom. a Famicom!